Finally, the Retro Tink has... The Retro what? The Retro Tink. It has arrived. Called the Retro Tink 2X. An awesome guy named Mike Cho developed this thing and put it in production for sale in 2018. So what is it? It's a line doubler, an analog to digital converter with zero lag for those that want to play on their original hardware. It also takes in component, composite, S-video, and requires no modifications to your console. Just plug and play. Let's break it down for you. So what does this thing do anyway? Okay. First of all, it takes analog 240p and 480i and outputs it to 480p. Now why is 480p so important? Compatibility of TVs lately to 240p especially is dropping if not gone. Okay, See my other episode on how this is really becoming an issue with 4K TVs. Thanks a lot Samsung. Not only does the RetroTink double the lines, it also converts the signal to HDMI. This is the biggest selling point as TVs are slowly removing composite component and S video which is already completely gone on newer televisions. So now let's take a look at this thing and some of the features. The RetroTink comes with other features as well through the two buttons on the side. So by default, it works in pass-through mode. So it takes that 240p analog signal and just passes it through as HDMI output. Nothing is done to the signal except a slight cleaning. And this is great if you want to output the 240p signal to another device like an OSSC. The other mode is 2x. And what this does is it doubles the line from 240p to 480p. The last mode is 2x filter. This is also 480p, but it gives a smooth image rather than that pixeled look. It's not really something I prefer, but I'm not going to judge it either. To each his own. So let's get down to brass tacks. Is it worth the 99 bucks? The RetroTink brings to the table what the OSSC does not. Okay, first of all, it takes in S video and composite inputs, which most converters only do one or the other. Secondly, the RetroTink gives you a better compatibility with most televisions today because it outputs HDMI. Remember, a lot of those component and composite and S video inputs are gone. And don't forget, the RetroTink gives you zero lag. Okay, it's like hundred thousandths of a nanosecond, but whatever, it's pretty much zero lag. But it does this while increasing the resolution of the output to 480p with additional options of pass-through and smooth filtering modes. So the RetroTrink does have some pretty cool benefits, but there are some drawbacks. The first is that the RetroTrink, it doesn't have separate stereo inputs. It actually has a shared stereo input for the both uh, component and composite. So this can be fixed. I mean, you can get a simple RCA splitter cable, so it's not a major issue, but just something that you need to be aware of. And the next thing is also really minor. I mean, it's the only other thing I could find <laughs> when I'm using this thing, uh, is that the fact that the RetroTrink does not have the ability to add scan lines. And I mean, come on, you're paying $99 for it. It's not $180 like the OSSC. It's not $340 like the Framemeister, okay? But the ability to add scan lines, okay? But I get it. The more that you want, the more something's going to cost. So it's understandable that it wasn't added, but it is something that I noticed and something that is to be desired. So I've had my RetroTink for a solid week, maybe two weeks now, and I've used it pretty much every day. Overall, I'd give the RetroTink a solid A. I mean, I'm talking 9 out of 10. You know, minus one point for those two little things like the shared audio and the lack of scan lines. You know, I mean, there's a lot of options that are lacking, but it's only $99. What do you expect? Okay, it's a 9 out of 10. This thing is much more affordable than the other alternatives. I mean, it gives you 99% compatibility with all the newer TVs today, you know, which is a huge issue with me. That bit me in the butt uh, several times. It also gives you a much better picture with a 480p. Not to mention that it takes an S-video component and composite all in one device and it adds zero lag while doing it. So yeah, I definitely think it's worth it. The other great thing is yes, the RetroTink readily accepts the cables from HD Retrovision. I have a set for both my Super Nintendo and my Sega Genesis and they worked flawlessly. And using those with the RetroTink, I think gives you one of the cleanest pictures possible. So I bought mine because of all these reasons and I'm extremely happy that I did it. 
So the Retro Tank is basically for those kind of players like myself. You want to play on the original hardware, but you don't want to modify it. You don't want to spend, you know, a lot of money on an adapter or OSC or uh, FrameMeister or something like that. You know, you just want something that's simple, it's plug and play, and can let you just move on, be compatible with all the TVs out there, and handle all of your inputs. That's basically who this is headed towards, and I think it's a great device for it. You know, I wasn't sponsored or asked to do this review. This is my honest opinion. You know, I mean, if uh, even if Retro Tink had sponsored it, it wouldn't have changed. <laughs> it would have been the same. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe, and uh, we'll keep the videos coming, and I'll talk to you next time. Laters.